and played a key role in the 2007 IPCC reports. Martin is a visiting professor at the Center for Environmental Policy at Imperial College London. He was co-chair of IPCC Working Group 2, Impacts, Adaptation and Vulnerability, and convening author in three IPCC assessments. He has been a professor of geography at the University of Oxford, University College London, East Anglia, and Bir Birmingham in, uni uh, in the UK. We have Cynthia Rosenzweig. Cynthia is a senior research scientist at Columbia University's Center for Climate Systems Research and at the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, where she heads the Climate Impacts Group. She is the co-founder of the Agricultural Model Intercomparison and Improvement Project, known as AGMIP. She was a coordinating lead author for several IPCC assessments. Cynthia was named one of nature's 10 people who mattered in 2012, and she is a recipient of the Guggenheim Fellowship. In May 2022, that's just a little over a month ago, Cynthia was also awarded the prestigious World Food Prize. Uh, onto the next slide, please. This is the book and uh, you can use this code um, at the top here to get a discount of 30%. We will put in the details in the chat as well. So um, if you're interested, the book is available in hardcover, softcover, and as an ebook. And on to the next. Um, these are some of the topics and authors. We are probably about two thirds of the way through um, the lecture series. And we will uh, put in um, the link where you can catch up if you haven't been able to participate. So we, um, David gave a wonderful lecture that got us started. Uh, um, so he started off the webinar series and then we had several on methods and approaches, impacts on sectors, effects on different regions and countries, and then policy and practice. Next, please. So uh, today's agenda, um, we have uh, Cynthia, uh, who will be speaking a few words as well, and also David Ryan, who is the series editor. Then we have the first lecture, which is Climate Change and Natural Disasters in Japan. This is the lecture by Nobuo Mimura and Yasuaki Hijioka. It's very late in Japan. Uh, it's almost midnight, so we really appreciate your time. And then Jen Evans will be hosting a live Q&A session. Uh, that will be followed by Joel Smith's lecture on climate risks to the United States and its security interests, another interesting topic. Once again, Jen will moderate the live Q&A session. Then we have David who will moderate a, a discussion on where next for impacts and adaptation. And if you have other authors from uh, the publication, we would love to have them join that session as well and then we'll do a brief wrap up. Next slide, please. Uh, just to get us started, I'm going to uh, run a very quick poll. This is a chance uh, for us to um, get to know uh, the audience uh, because unfortunately we don't get to uh, see or interact with you much. So this is one way to get to know everyone. So let me uh, get started. Um, so the first question, I'm going to launch this uh, right away, is to understand um, where all of you are joining us from. Um, we want to understand, um, you know, we are trying to get as reach as many people as possible. And uh, typically we have, um, Oceania is a little hard because it's very late there, uh, but we always hope that we can have participants from across the world joining us. But you know, sometimes it's hard uh, and that's why we have the recordings as well. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll. Uh, we have a little over 73%. Uh, we have about 73% that have participated. So thank you for participating. Let me share the results. So today we have participants from Asia, Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean and North America. Next, we want to know which um, sector you work in. Uh, we've had um, days where we've had all sectors uh, represented as well. So that's been wonderful. And um, yeah, we, we have a pretty, um, pretty good uh, range of sectors represented today, which is wonderful. 
I'm just going to give it a few more seconds so that more people can participate. And then I'm going to end the poll. And as you can see, we have a great representation uh, of the sectors. So that's wonderful. And then last but not least, we would love to know your involvement in climate change work. Once again, in the past, we've, we've had a range, we've had people who um, are also fairly new to the topic and want to be more involved and want to educate people about climate change. And it looks like we uh, have um, a range of uh, participants uh, today as well. So I'll just give this a few more seconds and uh, then uh, I'll just share the results with all of you. So really great to see uh, a range of people uh, involved in climate change work participating with uh, in this webinar today. So I'm going to stop sharing. And um, then we have, um, over to the next slide, please. Um, then uh, I would like to invite Cynthia to uh, welcome the audience and the speakers today. Over to you, Cynthia. Thank you, Manushka. Uh, welcome, everybody. Sorry, I'm in a car. Um, I'm on my way to, uh, actually, I'm in the middle of New York City um, <clears throat> uh, and have an appointment. But um, I wanted so much to welcome everyone to this webinar series um, with two wonderful colleagues, um, uh, Joel Smith and Nabua Memora. Um, but just a first word on the webinar series, Our Warming Planet. It's been this wonderful series of lectures. So I really do urge those of you who haven't uh, been on them to, um, to go to the YouTube channel, the link. Um, and uh, thanks to the NOAA CC Run uh, for um, for sharing their site. Um, and um, uh, the uh, and also just to share that the book is also not just a regular book, but the slides that all the authors are showing are what you get the actual PowerPoint slides. So the idea of the book is. To, uh, to enable teachers, um, students, um, uh, and folks, folks uh, giving talks about climate change to have this repository. Altogether, it's about 500 slides that really cover the whole field, the spectrum of the field of climate impacts and adaptation. So now I just want to say just a couple of words uh, first uh, before I introduce Nobuo and, and his lecture. I just want to say a few words about Joel Smith because Joel Smith and I, <laughs> I think Joel, what I remember in terms of memory lane is that I met you in Washington, D.C. when you were just maybe starting to work on climate change in EPA in the US Environmental Protection Agency under the uh, leaders, his group was, I think, being led by Dennis Turpak. Um, and uh, this group at EPA where Joel came and worked was absolutely critical to the to really the history of climate change impacts and adaptation in in the United States because it organized first what I call, and Joel, I wanna see if you would call it the first actual national assessment of climate change impacts uh, that had regions and it had sectors. And I, um, I um, uh, led the, um, the agriculture part of the agricultural regions, the crop modeling um, uh, way back, way back in the day. Um, and then, uh, and then the regions also were there too. So, uh, you know, so many of these things that we now are all continuing on and working on very hard can still uh, really started back in the beginning. So that's my memory of you, Joel, when you were first starting out um, and working for the EPA. And I just, I just want to say, um, I know you went on to, yeah, and have gone on to a very distinguished career uh, in the private sector and as a consultant. But your work for the U.S. government, uh, you, I feel you embodied what 
a civil service civil servant should be just and in the beginning with that you okay final memory <laughs> when we started the u.s assessment that we just described the first one so and the, the agriculture sector so when we you know we, we got all the crop bottlers up and running and everything and then joel joel you would call me i think like three or four or five times a day <laughs> <laughs> and then finally I had to say, Joel, please, we're doing the work, we're working. We can't, I can't be talking on the phone all the time. <laughs> so um, but um, but really over the years, I'm so happy to uh, to always be in close communication with Joel. So they, that's my that's my Joel um, memory lane. But let me now turn to introducing uh, Nobuo Memura. He is he, and we're so pleased to welcome him to our Warming Planet webinar. Nobuo is a specially appointed professor at Ibaraki University, where he served as president for more than five years. He has led research projects on climate change impacts and adaptation in Japan, again, for a long, long time, and uh, small islands in the South Pacific. He also, as along with Joel, has very and many, many of the authors and webinar speakers have a very, very strong uh, relationship with the IPCC. He was coordinating lead author of IPCC Working Group 2, fourth and fifth assessments, and served, and he has served as an advisor to <clears throat> the uh, Ministry of the Environment and Land, Infrastructure, Transport, and Tourism. So many key uh, sectors where climate climate impacts are important uh, in Japan, and also international bodies. And his his specialties are global environmental engineering, coastal engineering, and adaptation policy to climate change. So Nobuo, thank you so much for your contribution to the book and for your lecture, and um, and we look forward to hearing it. Over to you. Okay. Thank you very much, Cynthia, for a very kind introduction and the opp this opportunity. I'm very glad to be here to give deliver my lecture uh, along with the, uh, my chapter in the Our Warming Planet. And uh, so let me share my uh, presentation uh, let, uh, in just a moment now here. <clears throat> uh, uh, I think you can see the, see the slide. You know, uh, be, uh, before starting uh, my lecture, uh, I'd like to uh, briefly look back to the uh, wonderful memory working with Martin Parry. Uh, as since you introduced me, uh, I worked uh, with IPCC uh, for several times, and uh, uh, I worked with Martin Parry for the fourth assessment report, which was published on uh, uh, 2007. And, uh, uh, you know, after hard work of several years, then the, uh, we get to the, the place uh, for the <coughs> uh, IPCC plenary to approve the uh, working group two uh, AR4 uh, report. And, uh, you know, the, this uh, approval plenary is a very difficult and uh, heat up situation. And, uh, you know, uh, we have to extend the uh, uh, meeting pe period one day more. And uh, at the last day, yeah, overnight, we have the uh, uh, a very difficult discussion. But, that, uh, but uh, eventually, uh, uh, we, get, we got to the uh, approval. So this is a very, very wonderful moment to, to achieve <laughs> uh, the difficult task. So we are laughing at each other and uh, celebrate the uh, approval. This is a very good moment uh, during my experience of IPCC. And uh, one uh, <coughs> uh, year later, uh, the approval, uh, you know, uh, I invite, we invite Martin Parry to Japan and uh, we organize the uh, uh, IPCC symposium at the University of Tokyo and uh, the auditorium, uh, let me see, <clears throat> the, uh, the auditorium of University of Tokyo is full of audience, uh, more than uh, 1,200 people and uh, uh, Martin delivered the uh, very impressive 
uh, lecture about the uh, uh, IPCC report. And uh, after that, we have a, a special session uh, for the introduction of the Martin and the young scientists from Japan. This is also very, very valuable. And uh, you know, that night uh, we went to the uh, Japanese bar, <laughs> Japanese pub uh, for the beer and the uh, yakitori. And uh, uh, my undergraduate student also attended this party and uh, they are very glad, very excited to meet the, uh, such a famous scientist. So these are all good memory <laughs> uh, uh, working with Martin and uh, I was uh, very glad to be invited to uh, also for the uh, for this book chapter uh, to honor Martin Parry. Or oh, anyway, thank you very much again uh, for inviting me to the to the to this book. Oh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> let me start with the uh, uh, my talk to, uh, today. Uh, today's subject is climate change and natural disaster in Japan. This is the same. <clears throat> Uh, almost same slide uh, uh, included in the in the book, and uh, uh, in my uh, talk uh, I have three uh, subjects. First one is the recent changes in weather and disaster and the policy responses. Uh, I'm afraid that the uh, Japanese situation is not so uh, well uh, reported to the world. So uh, you know. Uh, I want to report now what is uh, going on within Japan. And uh, one of the most important progress in Japan is uh, establishment of Climate Change Adaptation Act. And uh, I will talk on the uh, laws and uh, uh, its roles and effects. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> last thing, you know, uh, recently I'm reading the uh, 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 one project uh, called S18. Uh, for uh, comprehensive assessment of impact and other adaptation. So uh, what is uh, uh, connection between the uh, Climate Change Adaptation Act and the research work? I will talk about uh, this uh, as a third topic. So <clears throat> well, first, you know, uh, uh, Japanese uh, uh, national land is stretching from south to north uh, and a very long stretch. And uh, surrounded by it is surrounded by the ocean and seeds. So uh, uh, you know uh, <clears throat> we have the uh, variety of na uh, natural environment, and uh, Japanese people have been uh, enjoying the uh, benefits uh, given from nature, uh, uh, variety environment. Uh, so uh, kind of the co living, uh, living with nature is a, a very important part of Japanese culture. At the same time, uh, such natural environment give us a, a big challenge. It's a natural, natural disasters. We have uh, earthquakes, uh, big tsunamis, uh, volcanic eruptions, heavy rains, landslide, typhoon, storm surge and drought, and uh, et cetera. So, Japan is a kind of the department store of uh, natural disasters. Uh, therefore, the, how to manage the uh, risks uh, uh, imposed by natural disaster is uh, one of the major, major uh, policy pillar uh, for a long time in Japan. So, and the recently, uh, the uh, uh, characteristics of natural disaster uh, has been changing. This is uh, another challenge for us. Uh, this is the uh, uh, kind of the average condition, uh, uh, climatic condition in Japan. Uh, uh, in Japan, we have the uh, 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 continuous increase in the uh, mean temperature uh, by 1.2 degrees centigrade per hundred year, like this. And uh, in terms of the precipitation, uh, we have a very ten, uh, strong tendency to increase the uh, 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 heavy rains, uh, days with uh, more than 100 millimeter rainfall uh, increasing like this. At the same time, uh, there is another increase uh, in the no precipitation days. So now the Japanese uh, weather condition tending to, to toward two extremes. Uh, one is uh, 
heavy rain uh, precipitation. At, at the same time, we also have the uh, facing the uh, kind of the drought, uh, more longer drought. So uh, that is the uh, major trend uh, uh, happening in Japan now. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and uh, you know, now we are feeling uh, particularly after uh, 2010, uh, the extreme weather event uh, <clears throat> is increasing uh, like this, you know. Uh, recently, Japanese government and uh, uh, meteorological agency uh, and media decided to use a uh, very strong word to alert Japanese people, like uh, uh, we are facing the unprecedented events or uh, once a lifetime disaster. So uh, this is very serious because, you know, uh, uh, we have the uh, 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 memorable uh, unprecedented event every, almost every year like this. And uh, this event happened uh, uh, scattering along the uh, Japanese island. So uh, I will show you the, some examples of what is happening in Japan. <clears throat> Uh, first example uh, uh, is the uh, heavy rain event in July uh, 2018. Uh, this is the uh, distribution of the <coughs> uh, uh, total rainfall for 40, uh, 48 hours uh, during this event. And you can see uh, the distribution is from uh, uh, zero to uh, more than 400 millimeter uh, precipitation. And this bold uh, black line means the new historical record uh, uh, for that point. And uh, this thin uh, black, black uh, line means uh, new dry records. And uh, so uh, you can see the uh, uh, almost half part, uh, western part of Japan, uh, have the uh, very strong precipitation uh, in this event. And uh, uh, this is another uh, pre presentation uh, this event. And uh, some part have the uh, four times, uh, uh, three times to four times larger rainfall uh, compared with the uh, normal condition. So, and, uh, yeah, and uh, you know, this is another uh, uh, statistical uh, diagram. And uh, uh, if we take the uh, total rainfall for 10 days uh, uh, for each event, then this event hits of the uh, historical record like this. So now the uh, such heavy rain uh, uh, events are occurring, uh, 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 as you can see uh, in this diagram. And uh, what is the uh, out, uh, outcome from this uh, event? This, uh, this uh, heavy rain event called the uh, very serious damage, like uh, uh, um, more than 200 people uh, died and uh, uh, about 500 people were wounded uh, during this event. And uh, amazingly, the uh, uh, 30,000 buildings are inundated and uh, uh, among them, 6,700 6, houses are totally destroyed during the, the, <coughs> the uh, flood. And uh, uh, many parts of the western part of Japan uh, flooded like this. And uh, in the mountainous area, you know, uh, we have the uh, many landslides like this, uh, you know, uh, during this uh, event, uh, Japanese mountainside looks like the uh, scratched by the uh, landslide and uh, down uh, stream of this uh, uh, landslide, we have the uh, very strong uh, damage, the very serious damage of the <coughs> debris flow like this. And uh, on the side of the uh, coast uh, ocean, uh, we also have the uh, another uh, type of the, uh, the disasters. Uh, this is happened uh, <clears throat> uh, caused by the uh, typhoon number 21 uh, in 2018. Uh, 
uh, this is a typhoon truck and uh, this typhoon uh, cross over the uh, Osaka area. And uh, uh, when uh, this is a tidal level uh, uh, history and uh, when uh, at Osaka, when the typhoon uh, approaches the Osaka uh, uh, Bay, uh, suddenly the uh, sea level increase uh, to here. And uh, this is caused by the storm surge by the typhoon. And the, this, uh, uh, this red line is uh, a normal astronomical tide. So we have the uh, uh, extra increase uh, of sea level due to storm surge about uh, three meters or something. And uh, for the Osaka Bay area, we set the uh, warming level and the uh, alert level for evacuation. But uh, this time, uh, the storm surge height is uh, 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 much exceed, exceeded the uh, alert level. And uh, what happened uh, uh, by this event? You know, we have the Kansai International Airport on the man-made island. Uh, Kansai Airport, uh, Kansai International Airport is the second or third a large, large airport in Japan. And uh, <clears throat> it is uh, built uh, on a, a man-made island in Osaka Bay. And uh, of course, uh, we have the uh, uh, many dangerous uh, storm surges before construction. So uh, this uh, uh, man-made airport is surrounded by uh, sea walls uh, well uh, protect against the uh, storm surges, but the, uh, this time uh, the uh, uh, the storm surges and high waves uh, 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 overflow into the uh, uh, airport, and the uh, airport area is mostly uh, inundated, flooded, and inundated like this. Uh, we, uh, when I saw this uh, picture uh, on the TV news, I was very much uh, 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 surprised uh, uh, because you know we did not suppose uh, such kind of thing is happen uh, in in this airport. And the third example is the uh, uh, typhoon number nineteen. Uh, uh, occurred in 2019. This is uh, another striking uh, example. Uh, this typhoon approached to the uh, middle part of Japan and landed in the uh, uh, East Peninsula, then uh, <coughs> went up over Tokyo, Sendai area, then went, to, to, uh, went out to Pacific Ocean. The amazing thing is uh, typhoon number uh, 19 caused over 140 dike breaks on the most rivers along its tracks. You know, this is a typhoon truck, and uh, 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 there is a uh, many rivers uh, under this truck, and uh, 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 most, uh, uh, almost all rivers uh, have the uh, uh, dike break, uh, some part of their uh, mainstream or branches. So, uh, you know. This is also striking experience for us. You know, uh, we, as I said, uh, J Japan has been making a, a big effort to increase the protection level uh, against the uh, natural disasters. But this time, uh, uh, such protection system built so far uh, 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 might be over uh, might be overcome by one typhoon. So uh, this indicates that yeah, we, need, we have to be uh, prepared uh, to the uh, you know, uh, unprecedented or uh, more increasing uh, uh, disaster event. So uh, based on such experience, uh, uh, the Japanese government and the many uh, ministries try to uh, change their policies. Uh, uh, one policy is uh, 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 changes to new weather disaster policy, which was uh, took place, uh, <coughs> uh, which took place uh, 2020. Uh, that is the flood risk management based on climate change projection. Uh, <coughs> uh, this uh, is a uh, you know conceptual change. This includes the conceptual changes. Uh, first uh, characteristics the feature is the inclusion of 
climate change projection for to uh, disaster risk management policy formulation. You know, uh, so far the Japanese disaster risk management is based on the historical record. So uh, we assume the uh, the worst case of the historical damage, but yeah, now uh, the Ministry of <coughs> Public Work changed its uh, its concept to include the uh, uh, climate change projection for the future, and uh, this means the uh, uh, one one point one times rain, uh, larger rainfall, and uh, this called the uh, two times uh, chances uh, for flooding. So we we need we are facing to to increase the uh, our protection level uh, based on the climate change projection, and the second feature is the integration of co uh, countermeasures, uh, prevent fraud and reduce damages and early recovery and build back better everything uh, related to the uh, <coughs> uh, disaster prevention, and. Uh, you know, third feature is a focus on the watershed management. You know, so far uh, the effort is mainly focused on the river flow, but yeah, now we are uh, expanding our focus to the whole area uh, from top to the top of mountain to the cases, and uh, we 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 are trying to use the uh, every potential to protect uh, our people uh, in the watershed, and. Uh, obviously, they combine hard and soft measures. So, uh, these, uh, uh, after these conceptual changes, you know, uh, many trials are uh, uh, going on happening, and I would take uh, Osaka area as a case uh, case protection of Osaka against future storm surge and flood. You know, this is the. Uh, uh, flood plain uh, in Osaka area. This is the Osaka Bay, and uh, uh, this is the city of Osaka. And uh, you can see the most area of the uh, uh, Osaka uh, is a, a potential flooded area <coughs> uh, uh, in the uh, 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 Delta Lake uh, region. And uh, in this area, uh, about 3 million people living, then uh, it is very important for them to protect uh, this area and the people living here. And uh, historically, uh, this year is suffering from the many uh, <laughs> typhoon or storm surge event like this. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> after, uh, uh, what do you say? A very serious struggle against the uh, natural disaster. Now the uh, city center of uh, Osaka looks like this. Uh, this is a kind of the uh, floating city surrounded by <laughs> by rivers, and uh, uh, Osaka is called the uh, city of uh, water, uh, some something like that, and. Uh, <clears throat> uh, current protection system is like this you know this is a city center and uh, uh, when typhoon hit the this area have the uh, very strong rain uh, which is uh, uh, flowing into the rivers at the same time uh, from the sea uh, uh, storm surge is coming to here so uh, they have the uh, protection system by the river uh, 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 dikes and uh, uh, water gate like this. And uh, uh, when the, uh, the water piling up uh, from the river, then uh, pumping station uh, uh, will be operate to discharge uh, this uh, piled up uh, water to the uh, main river stream. So, and uh, <clears throat> this is the real uh, water gate uh, in the uh, three positions. A very, uh, you know, funny, funny, uh, funny structure. And uh, this is the normal period. And uh, 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 this gate is open uh, during the normal period. And the uh, ships and uh, transportation uh, freely uh, <clears throat> uh, pass uh, under this gate. But yeah, if uh, typhoon is coming, then uh, this gate is closed like this uh, to protect the inside area of Osaka. And, uh, you know, 
Uh, now the lifetime uh, lifetime <coughs> of, of this gate is uh, coming. So now Osaka Prefecture is planning upgrade of water gate system uh, for its renewal by considering the uh, sea level rise and uh, increased uh, level of typhoon and rainfall, etc. So this is the uh, one of the outcome of the uh, changes in the new policy, and. Uh, <coughs> So far now, uh, I'm mainly talking about the facilities, protection facilities, but the, uh, you know, uh, in order to <clears throat> increase the preparedness or adaptive capacity of the society, we, we need to do many things, many other things, uh, building the capacity, uh, adaptive capacity or social resilience of the society mean developing the comprehensive capacity of the society to respond to the today's and the future threats. This is a concept. And, uh, you know, if we look at the uh, uh, adaptive capacity to natural disaster, I can uh, classify two uh, by using two axes. One is a short term uh, disaster like uh, storm surge, and uh, <coughs> the other side is the long term uh, disaster uh, in sea level rise and the temperature increase, gradual changes. And uh, this vertical axis means the uh, response axis from physical response to uh, social or uh, institutional responses. And uh, in terms of the disaster risk management, uh, physical facility is a kind of the basic structure, but it is not sufficient. And uh, for the <coughs> uh, short-term urgent situation, we need an information system for early warning and evacuation. And uh, uh, prepare to the uh, disaster uh, in advance. We need a disaster risk management as a, uh, another planning uh, systems. Uh, and to ensure this planning, uh, we, need, we need a good policy making system uh, and people uh, uh, to support this one, uh, people awareness is very important. And, but, but the, uh, uh, within a society, there is many we have the many vulnerabilities. So uh, vulnerability reduction, like a human development, poverty, alleviation, livelihood, security, quit, this kind of thing is a basic important, uh, has a basic importance uh, to increase the adaptive uh, capacity of the society or the resilience. So uh, uh, the, uh, natural disaster uh, management or uh, its capacity mean the uh, to increase the kind, this kind of comprehensive capacity of the society. Uh, now we are heading toward that direction. So uh, uh, I, I will hurry up to, to conclude my, uh, to show uh, my slide uh, some more and uh, <clears throat> So next, I try to introduce the uh, 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 Japanese situation of the uh, adaptation uh, uh, and the Climate Change Adaptation Act was uh, established in 2018. And uh, this is the history and the Paris Agreement is a, a good trigger uh, to start the uh, Climate Change Adaptation Act act established in the national parliament. Then after that, uh, many uh, ministries or even uh, the local government uh, started to consider uh, the adaptation in a systematic manner. And uh, <clears throat> this uh, climate change adaptation uh, uh, act uh, define the roles of actors like a central government, local government, private sector and citizen and other research institutions. And uh, this act uh, uh, focuses on the seven sectors, uh, agriculture, water, uh, uh, like, like this. And the main focus, uh, the feature of this act, uh, act is the uh, focusing on the uh, strengthening adaptation at local level. 
So in order to support this, central government have to provide the uh, scientific information and the other technical and financial support to the local government. That is the structure of the uh, uh, this uh, Climate Change Adaptation Act. And uh, after the uh, establishment of this uh, act, uh, oh, we have the about uh, thousand and uh, seven hundred municipalities. Out of this, you know, uh, currently one hundred and forty nine adaptation plans already developed, and uh, but the uh, many other municipalities are trying to develop uh, their plan uh, still uh, underway, and uh, <clears throat> at the same time, uh, major. Uh, localities, uh, local government uh, are requested to establish local climate change adaptation center. And uh, now the 51 local climate change adaptation center was established to support the local activity, to support and organize the local activities of uh, the adaptation planning and the implementation. So after the uh, establishment adapt, uh, climate change adaptation act, uh, the Japanese activities uh, proceed uh, uh, accelerate uh, uh, in a, a uh, large scale uh, like this. So finally, uh, after the uh, uh, Climate Change Adaptation Act, uh, the adaptation activity is spreading uh, through the local government. That means the, uh, you know, we have the uh, many uh, uh, requests from these uh, uh, actors, then uh, we, Again, we 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 need to develop the uh, uh, next generation of the uh, climate change impact uh, projections and adaptation uh, evaluation. So, S18 project is uh, organized uh, for this purpose, and and in order to uh, unify the result, we use the uh, common scenarios as a, uh, uh, for the uh, research and. Uh, uh, the out output of this research uh, uh, is uh, sent to the uh, uh, climate change information platform run by National Institute of Environmental Studies. And through this uh, mechanism, uh, such research results uh, distributed to the municipalities and the companies and peoples. So uh, this is the uh, uh, outline of the uh, current uh, research situation in Japan. Uh, I have a summary, but the, uh, this is the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the repeat of the uh, of what I talk uh, right, right now. So, you know, I'm sure I uh, <coughs> extend my speech uh, a little bit, and uh, this is my, uh, this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Nobuo, for uh, that really interesting uh, talk about the situation in Japan. I agree that, uh, you know, we don't really hear too much uh, about uh, the climate situation in Japan and the measures that are being taken. So it's really a great insight into uh, what's happening there. So very interesting. Um, <clears throat> I would now like to introduce uh, Jen Evans, who is a graduate research assistant at the Center for Climate Systems Research at Columbia University to uh, moderate the live Q&A session. Over to you, Jen. Thank you. Uh, so I'd like to invite everyone to use the Q&A function um, to ask your questions. Um, and I do see Leonard has um, his hand up. So we'll just, if, if you didn't mean to do that, we can start right off uh, with you, Leonard. Maybe it was by mistake. Yeah. Oh, no. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> um, and thanks, um, Nabuo. Great presentation, of course, as you as I've come to expect from you. Hi, Leonard. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have one question. Yes. Do you have any idea at all as to the cost of the protection design for Osaka? It looks very sophisticated, of course. It, is, it obviously involves complex engineering. Mm. So I'm curious as to whether they were, it was based 
on only numerical modeling. So for example, the device that closes the um that that closes off from um, an approaching hurricane to stop the Osaka from being flooded, mm -hmm. or whether you also integrated that with hydrodynamic modeling. Mm -hmm. um, but in any event, I'm curious about what the cost of that kind of protection would be. Just ballpark. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much for the question. You know, uh, you're right. Uh, you know, uh, the water gate of Osaka is a very special and a very uh, unique uh, system. And uh, it is not common for the uh, everywhere in Japan. You know, uh, in an ordinary system, we use the, uh, 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 you know, uh, use your ordinary system using the uh, vertical wall uh, up and down, uh, this kind of thing. And, uh, and uh, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, now the uh, as i said you know the system will be renewed uh in a several years so they are using the uh, ordinary uh, they are going back to the ordinary system with uh, with larger scale uh to increase the uh, uh you know protection level and uh, in that time in that time uh, you know in osaka case uh you know uh, uh they are now struggling how to flex how flexible they uh, they should uh, uh use uh, uh for the new system because you know the uh, we cannot determine the uh, exact height of the future storm surge so uh they're uh, building the uh, very strong base uh, for the water gate uh, for the uh worst case and the uh, uh, and the upper structure, uh, they use the uh, you know moderate estimate. Then combination of the, this uh, hard, uh, big hard uh, base and the moderate design of the upper upper structure uh, make a flexibility for them uh, to increase the uh, uh, whole system when they face the uh, insufficient capacity of the water gate for the future condition. So that. That in order to design such kind of system, we need a very sophisticated system for the uh, uh, future climate change projection and uh, 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 the increase of the water, uh, the volume and uh, uh, the forces uh, 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 acting on the water gate. Uh, all these things are uh, calculated or exper uh, experimental, uh, the, uh, proofs, then uh, we design that kind of thing. That it so in this means, you know, uh, this system need a very uh, science, a very sophisticated scientific basis, and uh, at the same time, you know, in the rural area, we we also have the very small rivers and other systems. So in that case. Uh, we use the uh, kind of the traditional system and the more simple uh, calculation. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, actually, I don't uh, give you the uh, very precise, uh, uh, adequate que uh, answer to your question, but the, uh, you know, uh, the level of the scientific knowledge or engineering is depending on the uh, situation in the in many places. That is the uh, 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 current consideration, my, my consideration. Is it okay for you, Renard? Yes, that's, that's, that's fine. Thanks. Okay, so we have a few more questions coming in. Uh, so from Tashar Pradhan, uh, with regard to local CCA plan in Japan, how municipal authorities and the said 27 universities collaborating for making such plans, which are the prominent areas of work and focus? Uh, pardon me, uh, <laughs> I couldn't catch up. Do you, I can repeat the question. Oh uh, yeah, please. Yes, so with regard to the local CCA plan in Japan, how are municipal authorities and the said 27 universities collaborating for making such plans and which are the prominent areas of work and focus? Okay, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, the uh, you know uh, the municipality is planning, and uh, it, uh, you know 
there is a difference between the municipality uh, <coughs> planning and the research work collaborating uh, uh, with the 27 uh, institute. You know, first the um, uh, all ministry, uh, the central government uh, ministry of environment develop the uh, kind of the guideline how to develop the <coughs> uh, local uh, climate change adaptation planning. Then. Uh, many municipalities can follow uh, uh, the procedure to develop the uh, uh, local adaptation plan, and this is the one thing. And uh, but you know, most of, most of the uh, municipalities lack the capacity to understand that uh, complicated climate system and uh, uh, make a projection of the future climate conditions and uh, uh, make a uh, design or the necessary facilities, uh, as I said. And uh, so in the research community side, uh, uh, we collaborate, uh, 27 universities and institutes to collaborate to use, uh, to develop the uh, very precise uh, uh, higher <coughs> resolution uh, information uh, covering the whole Japan. Then, if we uh, we finish this uh, research work, uh, then the every municipalities can use a database of this result for their planning. So that that kind of collaborate uh, is an interaction between the uh, local municipalities, local government, and the uh, research community is now we are considering. And uh, uh, within. Uh, you know, uh, our members uh, within our research team uh, uh, is also invited to join the uh, kind of the advisory committee for the local uh, government. So this is another way uh, to collaborate between municipalities and the research community. And that is the uh, two typical way uh, how to support uh, the local adaptation plan. Okay. Great. Um, and moving on to a question from William Travis uh, says, Dr. Mimura, thank you for a comprehensive presentation on extremes and climate change in Japan. I have followed discussions after the Tohoku tsunami about worst case targets for future protection. It looks like the climate change approach is to take a worst case flood and double it. Will you comment on the challenges of getting disaster planners to take the very large numbers that result, example, tsunamis of 30 meters, et cetera? How, oh, how do yes. they take them seriously? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, this is a very important uh, uh, question. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, your concern is very relevant and, uh, you know, the tsunami uh, <coughs> height is very large compared with the sea level rise and the storm surge. So, if uh, one part, uh, one part of the uh, the land uh, cities uh, are protected against the uh, uh, worst case of tsunami, then it is safe for the storm surge and sea level rise because the height is too too large. But yeah, you know. Uh, uh, Tsunami that did not does not hit the uh, everything uh, such a high level and uh, and uh, in the inland area uh, we also have the uh, another disaster like uh, heavy rain flood and uh, uh, landslide and this kind of thing. So you know, in terms of the uh, coastal protection, tsunami uh, <coughs> uh, uh, is uh, higher than storm surge and sea level rise, but uh, in in, in terms of the uh, uh, river flood and the landslide and this kind of thing, uh, you know, the increased increased uh, uh, magnitude of the rainfall and landslide due to climate change is a major target. So that kind of uh, you know uh, what you say, uh, the uh, uh, selection of the uh, you know relevant target uh, for each. Uh, natural disaster is a very important for us. Okay, and then this will be our final question uh, from Rebecca Snyder. 
Uh, Japan seems to have a lot of hard infrastructure to manage rivers, but do you think nature-based solutions are or mm. will become important in the coming years as flooding exceeds current engineering limits? Okay, yes, I agree with this, uh, <coughs> uh, this uh, comment. And, uh, you know, actually the, uh, we are also using the, uh, uh, we are trying to expand the use of the uh, nature-based solution in Japan. Uh, at the same time, if the, uh, the hazard magnitude of the hazard, uh, external force of the natural disaster is too strong, you know, nature, only nature cannot be, uh, 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 cannot be, uh, protect uh, uh, people and uh, 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 land. So I think that the, uh, you know, co relevant combination uh, of the uh, nature system, natural system and the uh, uh, mummy system is, uh, is necessary uh, to protect the uh, uh, Japanese society and the run, land. So, uh, now we are seeking the uh, you know uh, the most desirable balance between the uh, nature-based uh, protection and uh, uh, man-made uh, structure-based protection. That kind of approach. So uh, that is the uh, current situation and my uh, uh, my thought uh, uh, about about this question. Okay, thank you so much uh, for your presentation and your thoughtful answers. Uh, we have, there was um, one more question in the Q&A that you can feel free to type uh, your answer, but we do have to move on to the next lecture. Uh, so thank you so much, Nobu. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Those were some great questions. Uh, thank you, Nobu, so much for answering the questions. and. Uh, especially uh, I think past midnight your time, so we appreciate it. And uh, to Jen for <clears throat> moderating it. Next, 